So today we're moving on to chapter 6, and our first lesson is on roots and radical expressions. So for our objectives, we're going to be answering the question, what does the word root mean mathematically? So we're going to find the nth root of an expression, so just various roots, and understand how roots and powers are related in order to simplify them. So first we're going to find all real roots. So what are the real cubed roots of 0 0.008? negative 1,000, and 1 over 27. So in order to find cube roots, we're going to ask ourselves um, what number multiplied by itself three times makes each of these. So what number times itself three times make 0 0.0008? Well, 0 0.02 three times makes 0 0.0008. What about negative 1,000? That's negative 10 cubed, because negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100, times negative 10 is negative 1,000. And 1 over 27, cube root of 1 is 1, cube root of 27 is 3. So let's talk about fourth roots. What number times itself 4 times makes 1? Well, the number 1 makes 1, but also negative 1 4 times also makes 1. What about negative 0 0.0001? Well, we talked about imaginary numbers, and there's an imaginary answer, but this is asking about real roots. There is no real fourth root of a negative number, because there's no number times itself four times that makes a negative number. Whereas odd exponents, those do have negative roots. And 16 over 81, what number times itself four times makes 16? Well, that's 2. What number times itself four times makes 81? Well, that's 3. So we have two-thirds, but also we have negative two-thirds, um, because negative two times itself four times makes 16. Negative three times itself four times makes 81. So we have two-thirds and negative two-thirds. Okay, so go ahead and think about these ones. What are the fifth roots of 0, negative 1, 32? And what are the real square roots of 0 0.01, negative 1, 36 over 121? These should be pretty easy, no problem. All right, so what is each number real root? What is the cube root of negative 8? What times itself 3 times makes negative 8? Well, negative 2 3 times is negative 8, so our answer is negative 2. What about the square root of point zero 0.04? So that's 2. What number times itself 2 times makes point zero 0.04? Well, that's point 0.2. And this one is the fourth root of negative 1. What number times itself 4 times makes negative 1? There is no real root, because we're looking just at real roots right now. And what is the square root of negative 2 squared? <clears throat> well, that's the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Also negative 2. Um, so go ahead, think about these ones. Pretty simple. Alright, this is where it's going to get a little more difficult. We're going to have expressions, so we're going to have variables in there as well. So the square root of 16x to the 8th power. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the 8th, um, what number times itself 2 times, or times itself, makes x to the 8th? Well, that would be um, x to the 4th 2 times. So you can rewrite it as each one squared. You take the square root of each one. So you get the square root, or you get 4x to the 4th. For radical expressions, we're going to put them in absolute values where we need them to be. Um, so if we we can't have any negative real roots, so x to the fourth is always going to be a positive number, so we don't need to include that in absolute values. But if we had x to the third, would x to the third give us a negative number? It could, but because our original answer, our original problem was a square root, we cannot have a negative answer. So that's where we use absolute values. What about the cube root of a to the 6th, b to the 9th? Well, a squared cubed would make a to the 6th, and b cubed cubed would make b to the 9th. So then you have a squared, b cubed. And we can have negative answers for cube root, so that doesn't need to be in absolute values. What about this one? The fourth root of x to the 8th, y to the 12th. Well, for this one, um, we have x to the second to the fourth and y to the third 
to the 4th power. Those would be x to the 8th, y to the 12th. So this is x squared, y cubed. Now for this one, since we have a fourth root, can we have any negative numbers that we plug in? No, we can't. Well, x squared, if we put in a negative number, it's going to make it positive. But what about y cubed? If we have a cubed, that would make it positive, so we're going to have to put absolute values around y cubed. So that's how the absolute value thing works. All right, so let's go ahead and work through these. The square root of 81x to the fourth, well, that's 9x squared. That will still be a positive number. The cubed root of a to the twelfth, b to the fifteenth. Well, that's a to the fourth, b to the fifth. And can we have negative numbers for cubed roots? Yes, so we don't need to put absolute values. This becomes x cubed, y to the fourth. This is a fourth root. We cannot have negative numbers. So we have to put absolute values around x cubed, but not around y to the fourth, because that will always give us a positive number. All right, some teachers adjust test scores when a test is difficult. One teacher's formula for adjusting scores is a, the new score, is 10 root of r, where a is the adjusted score and r is the raw score, so that's the score before it's adjusted. If the raw scores on one test range from 36 to 90, what is our range of adjusted scores? So what we need to do is we need to plug in 36 as a raw score and 90 as a raw score to find our range of our new adjusted scores. So 10 times square root of 36, square root of 36 is 6. 10 times 6 is 60. So the person who got a 36 now got a 60. They just barely passed. And then you plug in square root of 90, that's about 9.487 times 10, 94.87, so that's a 95. So our new scores are now 60 to 95. Pretty simple? Yeah, it's not too bad. All right, that's all I got for you today. So have a great night. Don't forget to do um, lesson 6-1, and see you later.